welcome back to the farm. My name's Roz, also known as Passion Flower, and you'll find me here each week talking about my farming and creative life. Weather-wise, it's been an amazing spring week this week. It is so much warmer, um, but the nights are still cool and crisp, so you can still snuggle in, maybe have a fire, but the days are beautiful, and it's been just amazing to go for walks and just just be outside. I really think it's probably my favorite time of the year. And it's a time of the year where I can start to get out on the deck and knit in the sun in the afternoon, which is a lovely way to finish the day. And it's not too hot, so I can actually get my knitting done. Already though, the warm weather is bringing out the snakes. We have seen a couple already. I went for a walk and up near our quarry I saw a snake sort of scuttling along the path in front of me. Um, my sister seen one asleep, um, sunbaking in the sun, and I found a very recently dead one that had obviously been attacked by a bird, so it had been sitting out in the sun as well. So that's a reminder that this warm weather does bring on the snakes and that we now have to be really careful when we go for walks, try and keep to the paths and tracks that we've kind of made through the bush rather than going through longer grass, just so that you can see where your feet are and make sure that you're not gonna trample on anything. I mean, if you keep out of their way, they're fine. You just have to be really careful because you don't definitely don't wanna step on a snake. I think with the lockdown and not being as many people around, not as many cars, all that kind of thing, nature is just really thriving. So there probably will be more snakes. Um, there are also so many more kangaroos. We have a huge mob of kangaroos that um, sunbank up on the top of our hill. I, uh, I saw them yesterday and sort of walked up and didn't want to disturb them, so sort of um, walked around so that they could continue to sleep. And um, there are so many frogs at the moment too. We've got uh, a chorus of frogs in our dam, uh, also up in the quarry area as well. And it's just a really lovely thing to hear and see and just feel that nature's just doing really well. So even though we're all locked down, nature is out there and thriving and it's actually a really, really lovely thing to see. So in order to reduce the amount of mowing that we can do around the house, we've decided to move the two pet belted Galloway cows into the area of the yard outside the front of my place, right up close to the chook shed. So we had to put a temporary fence to sort of block them off from getting up to the rest of the driveway where our herb garden and the water tanks are and not around the front of, of where I have uh, a passion fruit bush and some other little trees. We didn't want them to be ruining all that. We just wanted them to be eating the grass. So we've set that up and then we've moved an old bath into that area and filled that with water. So that's their water source. And now they are sort of roaming between that area in front of my place, down through the cattle run and also down the old driveway as well. So they're doing quite a clean up and they do really like being close to the house and close to people. They're definitely pets and they are enjoying it a lot more than being out in a big paddock by themselves. Wade is a little confused by them. Every time he goes out onto the front deck, he wants to bark, but then he realizes that they were there yesterday and he kind of growls a little bit, gets a bit frustrated and goes back inside. And the next time he comes out, he does it again. Um, I think he'll settle. He has just been sitting and watching them and it is quite cute to see. They come up quite close and uh, it's funny to see how he reacts to them. We also set up a composting system this week. We've sort of had a bit of an ad hoc thing going. We've been using the worm farm and then most of our other scraps go to the chickens or to the goats. Um, but with the chook poo, we were finding it hard to get into a system of making sure that it was turned over enough before it could go into the garden. We'd had piles um, in spots in some of the garden beds, um, but then we couldn't keep track of where we were at with turning it over because you can't just put it straight onto the garden. It has to sort of be composted for a little while. So we made two compost areas out of pallets. 
One will be the active area where we are putting new uh, scraps and poo into and the other area will be the one where we will be taking it away from there to put into the garden. So we'll be starting that now and hopefully it'll be a much easier and better way of being able to uh, maintain that system and make sure that we're putting everything back into the garden again. Last week I shared with you my Bunch of Flowers mini skein sets for spring and now I am focusing on working on a yarn for Christmas. Yes, it is only September, but I'm hoping that by the 1st of October I can have that colorway ready to go and in my shop so that it can be bought and shipped and hopefully crafted with before Christmas or has enough time to at least get to people so that they can wrap it and have it ready for a gift for someone else. For the past five years, I've done a colorway every year for Christmas and it's getting hard to actually think of something that's a little bit different. Um, the traditional you know, red and green is very popular, but it, I'd like to sort of experiment a little bit. So this year it does include red and green, but hopefully it's a little bit interesting. I won't share it yet. It is drying at the moment. I can see it just over there and it's looking pretty good. So I won't know for sure until it is completely dry and I've been able to um, rescan it and have a look and do a little test knit sample to see how it looks. Um, so I'm working on that and I'm also working on getting my previous colors ready to go out as well on the 1st of October. So that's quite exciting. So with those lovely afternoons of sitting in the sun, I have finished the socks for dad. They are both done. There's the toes, heels and the legs. I did the cuffs just in the speckles in blue because as I said, I did run out of the dark blue that I used for the toes and heels. But I think that they look, they look really good. Um, I just got to get them to him, which is a little bit difficult right now, and hopefully they fit him as well. So after I finished these, I wasn't really sure what I was going to cast on, but we have been using um, cotton dishcloths in the kitchen since I started making them last year, and. They're starting to wear out, get a little bit grubby. You know, we've been using them literally every single day. It's the only thing we use in the kitchen. So I've cast on a new one for our coffee machine. We use this color, which is called Latte, um, for our coffee machine cleaning. And then we've been using this green, which I think is called Peacock. This is um, Bendigo Woolen Mills Cotton. For, so I use this one for just the cleaning of the, the benches and the, the dishes and things like that. So I'm using the pattern, it's called Grandmother's Favourite Dishcloth. It's just a corner to corner, you increase until you get it to the width you want and then you just decrease back down. So I cast this one on yesterday afternoon, so that one's almost done. I'll do a couple more of these I think and a couple more of these so that we've got a new supply and then I'll get back to some other knitting. Probably socks for Sebastian. He did ask as I finished the ones for my dad if um, the next ones were going to be for him. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for spending some time with me. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you next week on the farm. Bye.